Okay, good to go. Uh, yeah, where do you start? There's a lot of good things going on. Um, maybe with our men's soccer team, congrats on a nice win. Coach Boss, uh, fired up for them again next week against New Hampshire. Uh, I'm excited about going undefeated at home for our season. Can't thank our fans enough, our students, for their support. Thought they made a difference throughout the year. Uh, looking at the tape uh, against Arizona State, running the ball, tackling well. That's a good offense, played played physical. Offensively, you know, again, ran the ball. But great job of keeping, take, taking good care of the ball, and uh, we're able to finish finish that one. Uh, and then just like a, another week of college football, you got another big time opponent going to a place that's tough to play and uh, some good coaches and good players to compete against this Saturday. So we got to have a great week getting ready for that. Questions? Will anybody hear you say go dogs this week? <laughs> you know, um, yeah, definitely rooting for those guys. But um, our focus and all those scenario, you know, the, the ultimate thing is it comes down to us at 1230 on Saturday. And we got we got to play well to be able to earn the right to get in this, you know, scenario planning. And so that's our that's our focus. How important was that win over Oregon last year to your season, just given you went two and five? I mean, the record's not great, but winning that one game, what did that what did that mean for your season? Yeah, it meant, it meant quite a bit. Um, you know, let's face it, it's a rivalry game. That's a good football team. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was a, a, big, a big win. We'd have loved to win a couple of more. I know that last year, and it is what it is, just like this year. You know, we've got some good wins, and we've got some tough losses, and – this is another another opportunity at the end of the year to play those guys. When you're building a program, um, what, where, where does the rivalry game come in for you in terms of just building a program? Is it, is, do you, I know you're, you guys are all big on, you know, it's 1-0 oh and every game means the same, but I don't believe that. Right. right. Well, I think the 1-0 the and oh thing is about your preparation and the opponent and you're trying to win one game at a time. Um, Look, I know there's a this is there's passion behind this thing, um, and it's not just because it's the rivalry. I mean, this is a good football program that's done some good things uh, over the years, and so when you find ways to to beat them, like we did last year, well, it helps in recruiting and morale and momentum. A couple guys on defense, Avery. Where is he? Where is he? Yeah, we're we're hopeful to see him this week in practice. I can't guarantee you one way or the other right now. Uh, better idea toward the end of the week. Um, he just was not able to go after. I think it was in the first quarter when he went down, and we don't think it's uh, – you're just not certain where he's at. And then what, 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 what's with Cody Anderson? Kind of uh, tweaked his back a little bit um, and wasn't able to practice kind of the back half of that last week. Um, and so we'll see how it feels through this week. When Avery went down, Kyrie came in and had easily the best game of his career. What did you see from him, and how excited were you to – to get that kind of performance from him. Yeah, yeah, he did play well, played physical, uh, made some tackles out there. I think it uh, it showed that he'd been preparing well, uh, not playing a bunch at linebacker because those guys in front of him, but when he was called upon, he was definitely ready and prepared. What's going through your, your players' minds right now, and you? I mean, this is the first time in over a decade where, it, you know, whoever wins the Civil War means something. It always means something for the rivalry, but this means potential, you know, things falling into place for you guys, a potential – Pac-12 North win, Pac-12 championship game, and maybe even beyond. What, what's kind of going with your guys, your mind and some of the players? You know, I think uh, we talked about it. We wanted to play well and play our best at the end of the year. We want to be playing in meaningful games, and so uh, we've set the stage f for that. Um, again, you go back to this mindset, though, of, well, you got to prepare well like we've, like we've done a lot of the time this year, um, and that's what's in your mind is back to your – Routine, your preparation, understanding that the uh, it's a big game. Uh, but ultimately, if you want to win a big game, you got to play well, execute, just like you've been doing previous weeks. Where does the defense improved the uh, most over the last couple of weeks here? Yeah, I think that um, we've tackled well, um, affected the passer, not always just sacks, but affected the passer. Uh, you know, I think uh, taking the ball away uh, over just the last last couple of weeks started with a, a takeaway early in this game that helped us there. And you've lost some key guys defensively this season. What have you learned about the depth on that side of the ball? Yeah, um, 
that we've got other guys that are ready to, to step up and they, they need to. I look across even this conference, a lot of guys are down for different teams. Um, you get to the end of the year and that takes place, so depth always matters. And guys, Kyrie is a great example. Guys got to continue to prepare, uh, prepare and be ready when they're called upon. Coach, it's no question that Austin Stadium is a crazy game environment, but it's only 45 minutes away from here. So do you take some of that home energy and that home crowd support you hope down to Eugene? We hope to have a little support in the place. Um, it is a tough place to play, um, just like the multiple places in our league. You know, the crowd noise and the, and the energy goes there. They play well at home. Um, it is a, definitely a shorter trip for us on a road game. Uh, but we know that the environment is something we're going to have to handle. Now, I'm not sure how much of the past weekend's games you watched, Oregon versus Utah, but you guys are the only team in the entire Pac-12 conference to beat Utah that's this season. Is that one something you take pride in? And two, how do you watch that game tape to evaluate your game plan going into the Ducks? Right. You know, Utah's playing at a high level right now. That's a good football team. That's a tough place to play. We've definitely watched uh, that tape. Um, I think you take stuff from every, every uh, game your opponents played each year, and Utah does some things similar offensively especially uh, that you take a look at. Um, and so each week is new in regards to momentum of games and plays getting made because I go back to, again, Utah's playing really good. That's a good team. They were at home. Um, and so that's one kind of piece of the pie as we evaluate things. Coach, what's your policy on Avery and others playing in a game as far as how much practice they have to get in? Uh, you know, each, each one's a little bit different. Again, we lean on our our trainers and our docs around here and definitely into the safety of all our players. Um, he's played a lot of football. I, I think he can miss a practice or two and still perform if he's cleared medically. And last week, were you able to participate at all in anything with your former team as it was being celebrated? All right, yeah. The night before, there was an, uh, a great kind of event, not just for the team, uh, multiple people and teams getting a nominated into the Hall of Fame and inducted in there. And so I was able to participate a little bit in that. And then saw some guys around the day before and uh, a little bit after the game. How did you feel like you guys handled Jaden Daniels as far as running? Because you're going to see another guy like that this week. Yeah, similar, that, uh, similar in regards to the quarterbacks being able to hurt you running the ball. I thought for the most part, um, we were assignment sound. We had a guy for Jaden most, most of the night. Um, he got out a, a couple of times, guys missed some tackles, but overall, you know, just looking at the points they were able to score, we, we did a good job. What, what's been your assessment of late of, of Everett Hayes? He's knocked through some very long field goals, but he's also missed a number of short one, shorter ones too. What, what are you seeing from him? Yeah, we got confidence in him. Yeah, he missed the, the kick, I think it was fourth quarter. Um, he's been great year round on uh, kickoffs. Um, you know, he gets the weather changes a little bit, gets a little bit colder. Um, and so we, we got to be able to cover on kickoffs. And for the most part, we did that the other night. So we got confidence in Everett, and we need a, a field goal to be made. We're going to put him out there. Do you feel for Luke at all? <laughs> this is the number. Of, I mean, he's having a tremendous year, he but is. you don't put him out there. He's not out there enough to even qualify for leaders and probably get overlooked for conference, yeah, all-conference team. And I know he probably complains a little bit on his fourth down decisions and all that, but because he has. He's punted really well, and it's not just all about how far he kicks it, where he's placing it, um, how quickly he's been able to get it off, or coverage units. Uh, so, you know, we're going to need him again. You know, if we need to change the field position, we're going to do it. The, the kick he had that, that stopped it, that you were able to stop at the one, inside yeah. the one, was that, I mean, did you think just the whole team in general, was that about as well as you guys have executed a, a punt this year? I mean, pretty good. Now you can't do it much better. Um, and again, that's why back to, yeah, Luke, the, where he's placing it and kicking it, but also those guys covering and getting down there to be able to, to, to stop it at the one. It's a group effort. With Thanksgiving this week, do you have any plans to kind of celebrate with the guys? Do you have like a, a feast planned or anything like We've that? We've got a feast. Yeah, after practice on Thursday, we're going to kind of rally up and then and then give people opportunities to, you know, we've got some families in town. we got guys close enough to be able to get home staff-wise. So um, we'll take mostly afternoon for, for the family, but we will have a nice meal after practice on Thursday. Coach, what do you expect from Oregon defensively? What do they like to do and where, where do you – see some things there. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, challenging. Um, make it physical. I think they're athletic. They can get around the quarterback for sure. Um, 
Inside linebackers are really good player, stands out quite a bit on tape. Obviously, got an edge pass rusher that is well known and uh, earns your attention. Uh, and then on the back end, they can test and change up looks coverage wise. So it's going to they present problems. And on the rivalry aspect, we've seen that change over the years. How much do you get into it with them? Is it you know, rah, 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 or are you just, is it corporate? What, what's the rivalry mean now? Right. I don't think you need a lot of the rah, rah, rah. These guys will be energized on Saturday. Um, and so that's why back to our execution, knowing the plan inside and out, they're going to play with some emotion in the game. Uh, Got to keep, you want to do that. You want to play with emotion in really every game, but obviously under control. Um, and so these guys, our team, I feel like we'll prepare again. These guys will know the plan inside and out, and now it comes down to playing well and executing. Coach, were you at all surprised by the Not surprised. This guy can run. He he can, and you know, is blocked well. He's getting more and more confidence on on finding a crease in there, and then when he gets out in the open, this guy is not slow. And so I was not shocked for him to be able to take it from whatever it was, fifty yards out. Going back to the rivalry, you played in these games as a player. Does it mean a little bit more to you as a coach? I mean, in terms of emotions, being able to relate to the hype of this game? Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I've had some experience in the game as a player and now as a coach. I think as you coached in multiple rivalry games out there, understanding that, again, that a lot of hype, energy, which is awesome. It's a great part of college football, but it, it still comes down to who plays the best for 60 minutes and who can make the plays and, and execute. When you played as a player in one versus last year's victory, does either of those carry a bigger weight over than other or maybe more meaningful? Oh, I don't know. If you can compare it. Yeah. Um, so it's always it's a little bit different, uh, coach versus player. I know they, you know, when you find a way to win them, it means a ton, either either side. And it's always really tough when you, when you don't. So I don't know if there's a, a drastic difference in emotion, to be honest with you. Anything else? Thank you, Coach. Okay, thanks.